So hello to our viewers and welcome to Artists in Residence. This is a series of virtual studio visits um, that we're doing with more College of Art and Design's um, recent graduates, the class of 2020. Um, my name is Leah Komsky, and I'm the Education and Public Engagement Coordinator um, for the galleries here at Moore. And I have with me um, Stephanie Weinger. So Stephanie is an illustrator who is based out of Philadelphia. Um, her work is inspired by her love for and her fascination with wildlife and nature. Um, her illustrations usually depict animals in their natural habitats, um, and they include um, educational text that's based off of her research. Um, she received a BFA in illustration from Moore College of Art and Design this spring, and she is the recent recipient of the Marion Locke Senior Award as well as the Philadelphia Watercolor Society Award um, for Best in Watercolor. So she's currently working to obtain a certificate of natural science illustration, and she's a member of the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators. Um, so welcome, Stephanie. Um, thanks Thank for you. being here. Um, I'm just gonna give everyone like a quick glimpse into um, what your thesis project was. Yeah. So I'm gonna, you can see the screen. Um, this is um, Stephanie's Animals Everywhere project. So as you can see, this includes um, illustrations and text um, that educates um, their reader about um, all different kinds of wildlife in the United States um, in all different kinds of settings. So we have our underwater animals, animals that are um, living in the wetlands, swamps, deserts. Um, Stephanie kind of covers it all. Um, so before we like really dive in, I want to say that, you know, the purpose of this series is to check in with our recent graduates um, who have just completed their degrees um, and have accomplished so much <laughs> amidst a global pandemic. Um, so, you know, these are, for many of us, very stressful and very challenging times. So I wanted to just start by asking you how you're doing, Stephanie. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. Uh, I think I feel more inspired to really get myself going and get myself out there than I would have if we were still in like a normal kind of environment. I think that with all this time at home and with all this time to just kind of sit and reflect on what my four years at Moore have been and what my goals have been. I think that I've really realized that what I want to do and how I can get there, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's yeah. great that you've been able to use this time for some, some self-reflection. Um, yeah, and I think especially since I didn't get that, uh, that satisfaction of like, the in-person stuff that I'm kind of even more inspired to make myself get the satisfaction elsewhere. Like if I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to word what I'm trying to say. So like, since I didn't get the grad, the senior show or the graduation, I'm trying to make it up on my own, which is a hard process, but I think something that's very necessary for someone that wants to freelance or run their own business. Definitely. Um, those are definitely some valuable lessons to be teaching yeah. yourself right now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your thesis project? Can we start there? Um, I'm in particular, I'm really interested to know if um, any of the animals that you um, were drawing in that piece um, were drawn from like direct field observations or if that's something that you ever incorporate into your practice. I wish most, like, I wish all of the animals were done by direct field observation, but uh, I live in Pennsylvania right now, and there's, in a city, I only really see raccoons, and I don't, I didn't even include a raccoon in my book. So, um, essentially, the book goes throughout the whole United States, and I, I've been to a decent amount of states, and I've been to pretty much, like, every corner of the United States, but I haven't seen as much wildlife as there is. And I really wanted to show people that there's quite a diverse amount of wildlife within our country. Um, I know when people think of 
you know, a diverse set of animals. They think of like the African savanna or like tropical, like the Galapagos or something. But we, we do have a lot of animals here. And if I, if I had the opportunity, I would do it from direct observation, but uh, I don't have that opportunity. So it was a lot of online research and going to zoos actually to try to find animals there. Do you, are you drawn like in particular to the wildlife in this, in this country or do you, do you have an interest in exploring um, wildlife anywhere else in the world? I am interested in wildlife everywhere, but I think a teacher told me my sophomore year, we were having a conversation just about how society has changed over the years. And she mentioned that um, people used to be able to like identify things around them. They used to be able to look at plants and be like, oh, this is a insert name of plant. And people just used to know more about their environments and now we don't like someone someone pointed at a a snow leopard at a zoo and called it a cheetah and we just we just don't know what we used to about wildlife so for me the most important thing was to do like my local environments and that would have and although that would have been like the fit like the philadelphia area i wanted to be a little bit more broader than that mm -hmm. so for the first book um, it was important for it to be like my own homeland, but I want to do more of different regions. Someone asked if I could do Canada, so. Cool. Yeah. Wh who would you say like your, I mean, do you have like a target audience that you write towards? Like, is it, is it typically towards children or do you, do you write to adults as well? Typically children. Um, I'm not the best writer and it's something I'm going to be working on. But I want to make my target audience children, but I also want to do stuff that adults can enjoy while their children are enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So the writing in that, in my thesis, I tried to keep very simple. I didn't want words at all at first, but I think words are necessary for a lot of educational purposes. But so the words are simple, so children don't really need to think too hard, but the pictures are intriguing enough so that if an adult sees like a pronghorn antelope, which a lot of people don't know much about, they'd be able to look it up on their own. Does your, did your thesis project change at all as a result of COVID-19 restrictions or has it basically retained the same structure? It, both. So it retained the same structure. It was always going to be um, a children's book dummy, which is why, like, you saw the black and whites. It's not a completed book yet, but it did evolve a little bit, and I made, like, a, I made a part two. Oh, cool. Which is a coloring book version, where I took the illustrations from the inside, and I turned them into pages that kids could color and learn from. So, and that was a direct result of the pandemic, because I didn't even think about doing this before it happened. Are you selling those on your website right now or? Yep, I have 25 left before I uh, need to reorder them. Oh, that's great. Um, was that just because like you found that you had like more, did you have like more time? Is that like what the coloring book came out of or? I don't think I had more time cause I had to switch. Well, I didn't have to switch, but I opted to switch to full time at like my day job. So mm -hmm. like technically I didn't have more time, but I think that I just kind of wanted to distract myself yeah. from a lot of the things happening. Yeah. And I wanted to, I, don't, I didn't want to fall into like a hole where I stopped making art because we weren't in the studios anymore. So I just picked up this. It's definitely, I mean, I know like a lot of parents are looking for activities for their kids to be doing at home right now. So that was a big part of it too, because a lot of parents on Facebook were asking what they could do with their children. And I was like, I can make you a coloring book. Yeah, totally. Um, so were there any, um, you've sort of addressed this, um, but were there any sort of like particular challenges that you faced as a result of shifting your studio 
practice to like your home? <laughs> like, where are you right now? Is it, is it difficult to work where you are? And how did you sort of carve out a space for yourself? So I've always had my little desk. I share an apartment with um, another more illustration student and I've always had a desk here, but I think the biggest issue with this apartment is that the wall behind me is the only wall with windows. Mm. So it's very dark and it, the window, it faces like an alleyway. So no sunlight gets in. So it's a very dark environment and darkness isn't the ideal artwork making environment. So that's been very annoying. Um, luckily, we are moving in July to a place that has a lot of light where we'll have our own like office studios as separate rooms, which is really nice because I'm currently in my living room. But it it is what it is. And then I find ways like I'll move to the couch and work mm -hmm. if I really need to. But it's not ideal. It's not as nice as the senior studios were. <laughs> But it seems like, you know, you, you're flexible and you've, you've definitely adapted as best as you can. <laughs> yeah, I unfortunately haven't done any watercolor since being home because it's, it's a process and it's very big and I just haven't felt like it. But I've been doing a lot on my iPad and I've been doing like smaller watercolors that don't require, but like the bigger ones, like my thesis pieces thesis pieces um <laughs> I haven't been doing anything to that scale okay but hopefully soon I'll start up again so like on the flip side have you encountered any like unexpected opportunities as a result of these circumstances or has it sort of just been like you know dealing with you know the challenges that have presented themselves to you um like a positive from working from my apartment is my cat. She likes to join me. Um, a positive of me not having like the guided experience that I had at more is a lot more like uh, self guidance and you know personal leadership has sprung from this. That is essential if you're going to be a business owner. So I think it's a really great time, especially since while school was still going on and I was still technically a student learning how to uh, self guide myself and, you know, kind of run a business was a nice way to transition into that instead of just ending school and getting right into that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because it, to, from like an outsider perspective, it seems like the shifts was probably very like abrupt for you, but it's, it's interesting that you're, you see it as almost like a, like more gradual transition <laughs> to like being out there like in the world. Um, it it and, was pretty abrupt in terms yeah. of like get out of the school and gather your stuff. Yeah. But um, I, I was I'm a, like I still am someone that's terrified of life without going to like an educational mm -hmm. setting every day. And although I do plan on like getting a certificate or a master's, I'm going to take a few years off before doing that. Um, so someone that was really scared of life after education, I like looking back, I think it would be m more of a abrupt change if, you know, the day after graduation, I'm out here figuring out what I need to do mm -hmm. rather than me doing it like back in, what was it, March when this started happening? Yep. Yeah. Because I think it, during March, I treated school as if it was over, but I still had some work to do. It was kind of just like a, a net to catch me if I was doing something wrong on this, like, business aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. So what are you finding that you're prioritizing in your art making now? Has, like, has the experience of the pandemic shifted your areas of interest at all or do you find that like they're even stronger than before has there been like a change there's been a little bit of a change so i've been doing a lot of uh reaching out to people just uh professionals in different fields asking like what do you do and uh, what do you recommend to be done and a lot of them were saying that it's like a weird time especially for trying to find a job and I know that I the goal even like before senior year was 
to get any type of design job after school just to pay bills. And it's it's been hard uh, applying to jobs. So um, where was I going with this? Oh, so I was talking to um, different people in different fields and I I really wanted to work as just a graphic designer at a zoo after college, because animals. But um, I was talking to an art director from a zoo and she was going on and on about different things that zoos need. And uh, she mentioned exhibit design. And I love education just as much as I love wildlife. So my focus um, long-term for the future is to work my way into museum design and museum educational design, specifically like graphics and stuff for them, for exhibits. And that's a very small field and you need either a lot of experience in it or a master's. So I'm figuring that out. And um, also I've decided to open up an online store. So I've been spending a lot of time writing business plans and coming up with like logistics for that. It sounds like you're really busy. <laughs> I am. It might just be again, trying to distract myself from mm. things, but it's, it feels productive and it feels yeah, nice. Definitely. Um, so can you tell us, I'm, I'm really interested to know a little bit more about um, the illustration certificate that you're working on. Um, you're doing that online right now or how, how does that work? So my plan was, so for the Marion locks, I wrote a, a plan to get a natural science, natural science illustration certificate. And that would involve me going out to California to a school and taking a one year course, which is, it's a pretty expensive one year course. And I plan, I didn't plan on doing it right away because, um, you know, moving out there and it being expensive is like a big leap. Mm -hmm. So that, that was with the California State University of Monterey Bay. And now with like my new exhibit design interest, I don't know if I'd want to go to that course and then also pay for a master's, which um, I talked to people who were part of the natural science certificate course, and they said you could take it at any point in your life, and it's mm -hmm. only one year. So um, that's kind of on hold for the moment. It's still something I'd really want to do. Um, but there's also a class with the University of Nebraska, and it doesn't offer a certificate, like an official certificate, but it does offer like a class experience that is remote. And I, I still plan on doing that. And there was also a conference with the Guild of Natural Science Illustrators that I was planning to go to this summer that got moved to next summer. So the money that I got for that will be in a, a special place until that's up again. Mm -hmm. So uh, to sum that up, it, it's not something I'm like physically currently working on, but I'm making plans to pursue it later. Yeah, you have a lot to look forward to, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I just, just, place just need to follow like, through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so this is a big question um, that I think like, that I think a lot of us are grappling with right now. Um, so I'm curious to know what you think um, the role of art is um, during times of crisis. Um, and I want to know, especially because you know you're an artist who works um, primarily on subjects that you know are about wildlife um, and the environment. Are you interested in educating people about um, environmental issues? And is there like a sense of urgency um, to you in, in the work that you do? Um, I think my work is very urgent, although people may not realize it. And I, I don't just mean like mine, my illustrations or my work. I just mean like the field that I want to go in. Um, and I think that People like to say like, oh, why can't you just like photograph things um, to inform people? But with, you know, with science, there's a lot of very complex um, subjects and complex ideas that people just either don't understand or it's hard to see with a photograph or with just words. So I think it's very important for artists and illustrators to be able to be hired to like display those 
ideas in a simpler form and a funner form and a more engaging form. And I think uh, illustration and art play a big role in getting people excited for things that they would otherwise not understand or not really see any type of, I like to say beauty in it, because I like to create beautiful pieces of art and not just informative pieces of art. Great, that's a really great answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, my last question for you, and I don't know, this might be more difficult to answer than the previous one, but um, do you have a favorite animal? And I have a many. <laughs> um, they switch around, but uh, cows and puffins are cows my two favorite. Puffins. Yeah, um, cows just have really cute noses and cute tongues and they're actually uh they're very curious and playful but they're cautious so if you go if you walk up to a cow pasture they'll they'll kind of walk up to you but they won't let you get too close and they'll be really curious as to what you are and what you're doing but they they'll they'll run away if they sense you move um and puffins um because when I was young and eating the puffin cereal, I thought they were extinct. Because <laughs> and I thought the cereal was like a tribute to them. I think I was getting them confused with the dodo. Oh, okay. But ever since uh, this is embarrassing, I found out they weren't extinct when I was in high school. <laughs> Which, as someone that's trying to educate people on animals, that sounds really bad. But um, so ever since I found out they weren't extinct, I've really loved them. And I got to go to Iceland last summer to see them. And they're just very really small and really cute. Well, um, and then there's a lot of other animals that are my favorite. So it's I'm sure. Yeah. I could go on and on. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um well, thank you so much, Stephanie, for opening up a little bit, you know, about you know how this experience has been for you and giving us um some insight into your work and your practice. Um we wish you the best. And Thank you. we really can't wait to, you know, see where you land. Yeah. Um, just one last thing I'd like to add just yeah. for any other of my classmates that might be watching or artists that feel that they're stuck because of the pandemic. Um, every experience is what you make of it. And you could sit and be sad about it, which we all are, even if we don't look like it. But, you know, if you want, like, you can always take a bad situation and turn it good, even if it's, like, a smidgen of good. So always just look for the positive things and look for how you can grow from it, even if it's just small. Awesome. Well, thanks for ending that on the really positive message. Um, again, best wishes yeah. to you. Thank you. You too and everyone else. All right. Thank you.